Hello and welcome to the first and hopefully a series of tutorials on PIX, which is the DirectX debugger. I'll put a link in the description of the video so you know where to download it. This first tutorial will just be sort of a broad overview of the different types of things you can look at in PIX. Future tutorials will go into more detail on debugging pixel shaders and things like that. PIX is an extremely useful tool if you're doing any DirectX or XNA development. I'm often amazed at how many people seem to want to just guess what's going wrong in their game, why a certain object isn't being rendered properly or doesn't show up at all. Instead of just spending a few minutes in PIX and finding out for sure exactly what's going on. It may appear a little daunting at first, but with a little bit of ramp up time, you can save a lot of development time if you learn how to use PIX. When you open up PIX, you're presented with a blank screen like this. Generally, the first thing you want to do is click File, New Experiment. In this dialog box, you can specify the target application that you want to debug. So for purposes of this tutorial, I've just picked one of the XNA education catalog samples, uh, which I modified so it actually doesn't look like it. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of profiling you can do with PIX. In general, if you just want to debug why something isn't drawing properly, what you want to do is enable the mode where you can take a single frame capture of all the DirectX calls in, in one frame. So to do that, um, it's the second option in the list of options in this box. Uh, single frame capture Direct3D whenever F12 is pressed. And from here, you just click Start Experiment, and it'll run the program. However, if you're using XNA 4.0, there is an additional step you have to take, because someone screwed up, and it's not compatible out of the box with PIX. If you click on the More Options button in the bottom left of the dialog, it'll bring you to a more complex option setting view. If you click on the Target Program tab, and then check the Disable D3DX Analysis checkbox, then you won't have any problems with XNA 4.0. So now I'm going to start the game. And PIX, you can see, it has a little bit of an overlay in the top left corner. Um, right now, though, I'm just going to press F12. It will pause briefly, and it's taken a snapshot. And then I'm going to close the program. And then you're presented with this initially very complex looking view. I'll just kind of uh, quickly go over what each of the different windows are. The top box is kind of a a timeline of your application running and there is a will be a gray square wherever you captured a frame and that's what we're interested in looking at so you can just kind of click on that in the middle um, there is a list of all the resources on the G on the GPU so textures pixel shaders vertex buffers there's a whole list of everything here you can sort by different things you can filter. For example, if I wanted to um, look at all the textures, sort by width, and you can kind of see it'll list them all out, including their format and stuff. And you can actually look at them if you double click on them, but we'll get to that later. In the bottom left, so the two panes at the bottom of the window are where you spend most of your time. The bottom left is a list of all the DirectX events that happened that you captured. So they're grouped by frame. We captured one frame, so there's a frame here we can expand, and you'll see hundreds of calls. If you're used to programming in XNA, you'll see that a couple draw calls actually turn into potentially hundreds of actual DirectX calls. In general, they take the shape of a whole bunch, setting up a whole bunch of state and then making a draw call. We'll get back to that in a second. On the right-hand side is kind of a, a preview window of whatever 
particular object you're looking at at that time. For instance, on the render tab, it'll show you what is rendered in the current uh, render target. And there's also a mesh tab to look at draw calls. We don't have a draw call selected right now, so there's nothing showing in there. And there's various other tabs in here. You can there's a previews for textures, pixel shaders. This is where most of the action happens over on the right hand side. So going back to the left hand side, um, one of the things we can do is click on a draw call. So there's actually a quick way to navigate through the draw calls since they tend to be kind of important. There's a, some buttons with the letter D on them at the top of the window here. So if I click the one that has a D and a down arrow, it'll take me to the first draw call. And now over here on the right, I'm seeing what I would expect, which is the ground that I drew in my little app. Um, and if you click on the mesh tab when you have a draw call highlighted over here, then you will see um, a few different things. It'll show you the mesh. This isn't a very good example because it's just a square that's being drawn. Um, but on the left hand side you have what it what it looked like before uh, going into the vertex shader. In the middle you have what it looked like coming out of the vertex shader. And then and then the final viewport with clipping applied. Um, so if you're debugging why something doesn't show up on the screen, this is probably one of the first things you would check. Um, I'm just kind of gloss over most things in this initial tutorial, uh, just to kind of show you the types of things you can do rather than the actual details of debugging them. Um, and you can also, so you can, there's two tabs here, pre-VS and post-VS, and it'll show you all the uh, the exact data that was passed. You can see every vertex, what its values were for the different um, fields within that vertex, and the same coming out of the vertex shader. And if you can click here and debug the vertex. We'll get into that later. Um, also, you'll notice in the left-hand side, again, uh, if you have an active uh, thing being rendered, a bunch of these will be actually hot links. So for instance, there's a set texture call here. And if I click on it, I can. it'll show me what the texture was. So it's. Here we go. I clicked on the hot link that is the texture value that's passed in. And here on the right, you can see um, we were setting this texture into slot zero for the shader. And you can also navigate the mit maps on the left if you have them for your texture. You can look at different channels on the texture, the alpha channel, etc. You can zoom in and out. And back on the left hand side, here's another one set vertex declaration. So you click double click on that, it'll show you exactly what the vertex declaration your setting is, so you can make sure it's what you expect. You can look at the index buffer that was passed in. So basically you can see everything, all the data that was passed in, and kind of verify if it was correct. Also, you can click on a pixel shader and it'll show you the the assembly and the source code. You can flip between them. Okay, now back on the right hand side, another common, so let, let's first of all, let's just go to the next draw call on the left hand side here. So we'll click the D button again, and now we'll see the plant also appears there, which was the next draw call. And this will be a more interesting mesh to look at. So since we have a draw call selected on the left-hand side, we can go click on the Mesh tab on the right-hand side and see how the mesh was transformed before it was rendered. And you can also click on a particular vertex here, and it will highlight it in, the, in each of the three little windows here. Another interesting thing to do, uh, another common thing you'll be doing is you want to find out how a pixel uh, got its final color. So, for instance, if we were curious about you know, why this pixel is green right here, you can right-click on it and say Debug Pixel. 
and then it switches you to a debugger tab, which will show the the series of transitions the pixel went through. So initially it was green for whatever it was whatever it was in the back buffer before. Then there was a clear call, which turned it pale blue. And then there was the draw call with the uh, that drew the terrain, and that kind of made it brown. So each each section shows you what the pixel shader output, and then what ended up being in the frame buffer, which could be different if you have alpha blending enabled, etc. It will also tell you if um, a pixel was rejected due to depth test or alpha testing. And then the next draw call it turned it green because we were drawing the plant. And then the final color was green. And from here, you can get to the debuggers to debug the vertex shader and the pixel shader. And we'll get to that in a following tutorial. I think that's probably about it for this tutorial.